Father, we've, um, we've done as your word commanded us to do. We've come together this morning. We've come and offered up to you the praise and worship and honor that you deserve. We've come and brought our tithes and our offerings. We've come and given back to you because you have first place in our life. We've come and we've celebrated communion. We've thought of and given thanks for everything Jesus has done for us and is doing for us. So now, Holy Spirit, we ask you to come and do what only you can do as we open up your word that you can speak to each one of us totally individually. You can, uh, you can highlight things in our lives that you want to highlight. You come not to condemn us, but to just convict us and point a finger there so that we walk after you, so that we change, so that we're people that are constantly changing. We don't have it all together. And so as we open your word, Holy Spirit, we ask that you would just speak, uh, speak afresh to me. Again, as even as I speak it, speak afresh to us. In Jesus' name, amen. We started off the year with our word for the year as being light. And we spoke about that Jesus Christ, the light, was, to rise up, was rising upon us like the breaking of the dawn. And so this is my last four lines to you when we finished Vision Sunday, which was the 2nd of February. It was that 2020 is not a year for us to stumble through or in the darkness, but to allow his light as we follow him to penetrate every area of our lives, every room of our life in our minds, our hearts, emotions and will. And we ended that service was with here I am, Jesus, shine your light in my life, shine your light through my life. And then we've gone through five months of complete change uh, where things, church, lives, people's employment, so many different things have been uh, turned upside down. And it was just interesting to me that I do, a, uh, I do my own daily readings and then I do a couple of devotionals uh, with some of the men in our church. We do those on a daily basis. And then each morning, if you tune in to Hope Point Church, YouTube, there's a devotion I put on for three or four minutes, comes up Monday to Friday there. At the moment, we started in the Psalms. When we, when we closed up shop, we started in the Psalms and we're just over halfway through. And at the end of uh, this month, we'll actually hit Psalm 119. So I'm not too sure how long it's going to take us to get through that chapter. But in all of my readings this week, the word light kept coming up. Every verse I was reading was light was light. God lights up even the darkest nights as we, as we, just, as we just sang. So I'm going to share uh, a couple of those verses uh, with you this morning. We, or me, I should say, we've just uh, finished pruning uh, back our roses and we know how to grow grass, weeds, nothing much else, but our roses for some, for some unbeknown reason just blossom every year. And so uh, I've just cut them all the way back, and so they're about this tall at the moment, if you saw them. The dirt's been dug up, cow, cow manure's been put in, lime sulfur's been sprayed on, thanks to Jeff, who carries it around in the back of his car, and um, sugarcane mulch has gone down, and if you looked at them, there's nothing happening. And if you looked at them, you would think, hmm, nothing's happening there. You'd be tempted to go and pull them out of the ground, and start again, but something is taking place in the darkness of the soil that I can't see, that we can't see with our naked eyes. And in the right time, maybe a month or two, all of a sudden little shoots, uh, I, I go out and take a photo of them each year, little buds just seem to know, now's the time that where does burst up and they come up into the sun, sunlight and with a little bit of water and sunlight, those roses by probably by the end of September will be a metre, some of them go to two metres tall and they'll be filled with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of buds which birth forth into white rose flowers. The only, we'd be tempted to look at them now and go, pull them out, but the roses are staying planted. They've been nourished, they've been fed, they've been watered, they've been cut back like, 
uh, the Holy Spirit God does in our lives and as soon as they come to the light, they will spring forth into the darkness. And so there's, 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 a, there's a temptation sometimes when we walk through life, we walk through things that are dark. We walk through dark times. There's, that's just the way it is. And we walk sometimes through the darkest hours and sometimes a temptation can be in our lives when things are not going the way we plan is to in a sense uproot ourselves even from uh, f- from following Christ and I'll look after this myself but uprooting ourselves not going to help the situation we've just got to stay planted we've got to stay connected we've got to stay in his word we've got to stay praising him we've just got to stay just keep calling out to him even when it's the most difficult thing to do because he comes to fill our darkness with his light. And I read a couple of scriptures this morning. I put a heading on them. I didn't really have a heading, but I put a heading on for the sake of putting a heading on. But the first one is this, we come to his light. Has I been reading through the book of Hosea? It's a, it's a minor prophet uh, towards the end of your uh, Old Testament. And the people again have turned away from God and they're not seeking him, they're not serving him. And Hosea 1 to 3 said, I've actually shortened the verse down a bit. It says, come, let us return to the Lord. We're coming, this is us, we're coming to his light. Come, let us return to the Lord. He will restore us. Let us press on to know him and he will respond to us as surely as the arrival of the dawn or of the coming of the rains in early spring. In this time, in these last couple of months especially, This is a time instead of running from God that we're to run to him. This is not a time to abandon him and just go, I'm going to try and figure this my whole life out myself. It's a time to run to him. It's a time to return to him. And I love the confidence of the prophet here. He says that when I return to him, it's not a, a, oh, he may be. He will restore me. He will respond to me. He will speak to me. It's as sure as the rising of the sun At dawn, the word there in the Hebrew is S-A-H-A-R. It means the first light of the sun in the east that lights up the dawn, that bursts through the darkness. And so there's an invitation to you and I, if you're watching online this morning, I know many of our church are and many in different places, an invitation to us today as followers of Christ to run to his light, not to run from it, but to run to it of craving for his light? Will I press in to know him more? Will I press on to hear his voice? And will I welcome his light into my life? Because we can sing about it and we can sing as we did this morning and pray over the nations and yet not have a sense that I want to welcome his light into my life, into my world. Not just so we feel good, but so that he restores us, so that he responds to us. I read this on Vision Sunday from... Uh, Brian Simmons from the Passion Translation. The only time gloom, darkness ends in my life is when I crave for his light and allow him to penetrate my heart, penetrate my fears and my distress. It's a picture of us coming to his light in the midst of our darkness, in the midst of I don't know what's happening, in the midst of I don't understand, in the midst of our confusion, in the midst of when I can't see what lies ahead. I can't even see in the natural what my next step is because this last five months has literally turned everything else upside down. And so in the picture what I can't see, when I can't understand, it's a picture of us running to Jesus, running to the light of the world. It's not a time just to be apathetic. We, it's not a time to just be half asleep. It's a time that I need to run to him and I need to run to his light. So we run to his light. The second beautiful picture is that God comes to us with his light. This is, this is one of my readings again. This is from the book of Micah. He's a couple of books after Hosea. He's towards it, nearly at the end of the Old Testament. Micah says, as for me, I look to the Lord for his help. I will wait confidently for God to save me, and my God certainly will hear me. Here again is a prophet. The confidence is that as I wait on him, as I wait for him to save me, my God will hear me. As we prayed this morning, God hears us. God moves through our prayers. 
It's, 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 he, it's a confidence in him. He says, listen, do not gloat over me. Some of your versions would use, do not rejoice over me, my enemy, for though I fall, I will rise again. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord himself will be my light. He will be a light unto me. We run to him in our darkness, but he also comes to us in our darkness to rescue us, to pick us out, to shine his light, to dispel the darkness in our lives. Things that knock us down, things that take us out, things that we were not expecting, that spiral us into this uh, confusion, into this darkness, things that we don't understand, when we cannot see why, we cannot see the road ahead. It says God comes to rescue us, to pick us up, to shine his light, to deliver us and show us a way out. He brings orders in in his light shining on us. He brings order into our chaos. You know what it's like to stumble in the dark? Jew was telling, I'm sure it was Judith was telling me about a family that said they didn't have an alarm, they just had Lego all over the floor. Sometimes we think we know the way, but we stumble. I'll give you two examples. Last year, I've been here now, well, let's just say this building was built in 1992. That's 28 years. I reckon I've walked nearly every part of the carpet, every part of the room. I know where everything is. And so I came up here and had to do something and I turned all the lights off because I know how to get out in the dark. And so I came over here and I went down those steps, but the trouble is I misstepped. I was on step one, but I misstepped two and three and four and I hit step five and then I did a hop, step, hop, stop and leap and ended up in the chairs over there. Shaken. Just after Christmas this year, I came into the building all dark to turn the alarm off and the light switch is over there. Without looking at anybody or pointing any fingers, so I looked this way. We had the Christmas tree there. So I came in, I knew how to get to the light switch and I was halfway to the light switch and I went head over turkey because someone had left something in the dark sitting there in front of the Christmas tree. But I think, see, I think I know how to get from here to here to here. I've been here for so long. I can do it in the dark. But you know what? We 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 come across times in our life where darkness comes. (laughs) Katrina, did you leave it there? Sorry. (laughs) We stumble in the dark when we think we know the way. But when he comes with his light. If I had turned the light on, it changed everything. Because I could see what's in front of me. That's why the Jesus, the light of the world, has to fill our lives. Because we think we're smart enough to know how to get from here to here. But we can't see in the dark the things that are there. And so once the light comes on, it changes everything. The Hebrew word for one of the Hebrew words for light is O H R. It's actually all capitals. It means to illuminate or to dispel the darkness. For even the darkest nights, God is able to light them up. This is the verse I shared uh, last Wednesday, I think, in our devotions, 8th of July. Psalm 112, 4, I've read it many times before. When darkness overtakes the godly, meaning that at times darkness does overtake us. His light will come bursting in. That's his promise to you this morning. As you go through this week, things will happen and you're just going to feel like darkness, I can't think of the next word I'm going to say, but anyhow, like just confusion. You can't can't work it out. The promise of Psalm 112.4, when darkness overtakes the godly, his light will come bursting in. Darkness, gloom, despair, hopelessness is overwhelming and it overtakes all of us. 
But Jesus comes in his light to burst in and upon your mind, your world, your situation. And with his light, he comes to be our light. He comes bursting in. You need to memorize that verse. That's one of the verses you need to memorize. Lord, I'm in the midst of darkness, confusion at the moment, but the, the promise of your word says that when darkness comes in, that your light will come bursting through for me. You won't even have time to look it up. You need to memorize it. We open up to his light today. We welcome your light in. How do we do that? Through prayer, just through worship, through seeking him, through being desperate for him, and just by opening up his word. We're guided by his light. Psalm 119, 130. The entrance of your word brings light and it gives understanding even to the simple. The entrance of your word, as I open it up, if I don't open it up, I'll, I'll still be wandering around in my darkness. But as I open up, your promise of your word is, as I open up your word, whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through today, open his word. The entrance to your word gives me light and brings light to me in my pathway and in my confusion. Lighthouses warn boats about dangerous reefs, rocks along the coastline, and it helps guide them around them in the safety to the shore or the wharf or to the dock. Lighthouses send out a light. The modern ones even have flashing red lights, which are actually warning lights to the boats out there. Lighthouses are precision built. You don't see one in the middle of George Street. We haven't got a lighthouse sitting out here in George's Hall. They're precision built out on the shoreline where the cliffs are to ensure that their lights and messages they send are visible and understood. It makes sense to build them, to guide people, to, to guide the ships at sea into safety. God has given us his word to guide our steps and lives. The Hebrew tra tradition for the Bible is referred to as the Torat-O-R, T-O-R-A-T-O-R. It means the guide of light. That's what this is. It's the guide of light. And we, well, I, I, like, I'm like you, we spend a lot of our time trying to figure things out ourselves and trying to make things work when this is the guide of light to us. I'm going to read from this little book in the middle from Dave, Dave Adamson. I've said to you before, if you don't follow him on Instagram, I'm not too sure if he's on uh, uh, Facebook or not, but he, it'll, you'll find him under Aussie Dave. He says this, Is the Bible your lighthouse, your God of light? As Christians, as followers of Jesus, is the Bible your lighthouse, your God of light? Not just so that his word exposes our darkness and lights up our darkness, but for us to be able to walk in the light as we follow him. Lastly, we run to his light. His light comes to us and we are his light. We are his light. Isaiah 60 verse 1 to 2, I'm going to read from the message, says... Get out of bed. Wake up. Put your face in the sunlight. God's bright glory has risen for you. The whole earth is wrapped in darkness. All people sunk in deep darkness. But God rises on you because we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. His glory breaks out over you. So get up and shine. For God has shone his light in you. His glory is shining on you. The word there for glory God's glory just means there's something of, of heaviness, something of weightiness in who God is. We've experienced the weight of his goodness. We've experienced the weight of his beauty. We've experienced the weight of his mercy, the weight of his love, the weight of his compassion, the weight of his forgiveness. It's not just oh, something casual. There's a weight to it that we carry around within us. And his light has reached us in the darkest of circumstances. And now we shine who he is to the world around about us. And I know we don't always get it right. Because at times people rub us up the wrong way and say, we'll say stuff that we shouldn't say or we'll speak things we shouldn't speak. But we are the light and we turn on the light every day when we get up and when we leave our house. Do you hear me? We turn on the light every day 
when we get up and we go out. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 14, 16, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven through us just sharing. I had the opportunity to share with someone yesterday morning for an hour whilst just waiting to do something that I wasn't expecting to waiting to do, but I had the chance just to share a conversation as we share, as we serve. The, 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 the pins and needles that made the things for the families going through cancer, as we give food, as we give a drink, as we give help. All these ways we are shining his light. It's not about how great we are. It's about Jesus Christ in us who said, you are the light of the world. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7, this precious treasure, Jesus Christ in us, this light and power that now shines within us, is held in perishable containers. Literally, some of your versions would say, chipped, cracked pots. Now, if you walked up to someone today and said, you look like an old chipped, cracked pot, <laughs> the women would probably be highly offended, but some of the men would say, yeah, 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 yeah I am. But uh, <laughs> He's saying, listen, we have a light, we have the glory, we have Jesus Christ living with us, and it's just held in this weak body, perishable container, chip crack pots, so that everybody can see that the glorious power and the light shining from out is from God. It's not from us. It's like God has done a work in me. And we carry it around in this chip crack pot. Maybe that's how the light gets out. Because it's not like we're not... If we were a perfect pot, we may put a lid on, we may try and hold, hold the light to ourselves. But there's cracks and there's chips and so this treasure, this light comes out. We have nothing to boast about because it's all because of Jesus. He has flooded our lives with light in the midst of our darkness. OHR or has illuminated out our lives. It's dispelled the darkness. Let me read this to you. Because he's going to talk about the Hebrew word OHR. 52 Hebrew words we should all know from uh, Dave Adamson. He says, listen, several times in the Bible, the followers of Jesus are called to be the light in the world. We are told to let our light shine in order to bring glory to God and we're told to be full of light. Begging King. The Hebrew word for light is or, how I just mentioned to you, which means to illuminate or dispel the darkness. The idea behind the metaphor of light is that Christians are to illuminate moral, physical, emotional and spiritual darkness. Another de definition of the word is that to bring order into something that is chaotic. And you bring order to that chaos when you switch on the light. In the same way followers of Jesus are called to bring order to the chaos around about us. Don't get caught up in the chaos and the negative this and the negative that. We're here to bring light. When we care for people in need, when we show compassion to hurting people, when we stand up for justice or provide mercy, we are being light in the world. Have you ever considered the different sorts of light in our world? Some lights are designed to bring safety and security. The sunlight brings life and warmth. Why light bulbs and flashlights illuminate and help us to see better. And then there are lights that we don't want to see in our everyday life. Flashing warning lights or check the engine light or check the oil light in your car. I wonder how often, he says, we are more like a check the engine light to the people around about us. Whenever we lack compassion, Whenever, listen, whenever we focus on winning an argument instead of sharing our faith or when we refuse to accept people who are different from us, we are more like a flashing warning signal than a light that brings order to our chaos. How 
will you shine your light today? Go light up your world with the light of Jesus that's in you this morning. Let's just close our eyes this morning while Beck plays. No one moving for a second. Do you need to come to his light today? Maybe for the first time, maybe you've never ever said yes to Jesus Christ. And you may think he's a good person. You may know what he did at Christmas and Easter. But have you ever said yes to Jesus? I'm asking you to light up my life. I'm asking for your light. I'm, I'm surrendering my life to you that you would light up my darkness. Today you can do that. It's just a matter of saying yes, Jesus. What about us here as followers of Christ this morning? Because there's got to be a response, church, as we have just read these scriptures on light. There's got to be a response all of us have to make. Do you need to ask for his light to come and to shine into every room of your life, every floor? Because we have sometimes we have rooms where the door is closed and there's a dark spot, there's a darkness here, but what do you need today to bring whatever is hidden, what do you need to do to bring to the light today? Whether it's attitude, responses, whether it's just sins of missing the mark or whether it's wrong thinking, what do you need today just to bring to the light? Holy Spirit, just come and speak to us, just show us this morning. ask for a response either if where you are you're just more comfortable to lift your hands or whether you just want to stand this morning and just saying Lord Jesus I come to your light maybe there's things in my life or just the way I've even lived for the last couple of months even just in this week how I've reacted to somebody how I've spoken to somebody whatever it is I need to ask for your light to just shine on me. Maybe you're holding unforgiveness against someone this morning. That's why uh, Beck plays this morning. There needs to be a response. Either just lift your hands and say, I'm coming to your light or just stand where you are this morning. Saying, Lord, I'm bringing my life to your light. I'm asking you to shine into every room, into every floor this morning. Maybe this morning that you just feel like darkness is overtaking this one. Just lift your hands where you are. Just say, Lord, thank you. The promise of your word says that when darkness overtakes me, your light will come bursting through this morning. Thank you, Jesus. 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 So worship team come this morning. We can't be His light until His light is truly shining in our hearts, in our lives. And so, Lord, as we run to You, as we ask for Your light just to come in, Lord, this week You're going to lead us to places. We're going to walk into chaos. We're going to walk into darkness. We're going to walk into confusion. But we do it with Your light into the people around about us. Your darkness, Your light, lights up even the darkest of nights and so it's your light within these cracked chip pots you're going to bring us before people into situations into circumstances where we're just going to bring your light help us to be ready Lord. help us to be ready just to be able to share your light able to give away your light able to give away your love. Oh, Lord, we thank you this morning for your light that lights up our darkness, that lights up our way in Jesus' name. Let's stand this morning, church, as we sing.